Hello, good day to everyone and welcome you to the another episode on mold flows, tips and workflow. In this episode, we are going to discuss another three results, part of the top 12 results to be viewed for the mold flow analysis or a typical mold flow analysis. And as I mentioned earlier, this could be a part of your results or standard report. So let's get started. What we are going to view today are the results related to the fill and flow, to the cooling analysis and finally the warpage analysis. So let's get started. You can review the earlier my videos or clips to review those six to seven results that we already reviewed it. So in this episode, I'm going to take you through the results like first to get started is a frozen layer of fraction. Now, what does these results typically uh, means and how it could be helpful to get the understanding onto the uh, whether the gate is freezed or uh, there is sufficient another time to pack on the material. I am going to on the beams on the circuit uh, or beams on the sorry fit system and it shows the results that is at the end of the 15 seconds. Let me on the another cavity as well and uh, frozen layer of fraction results particularly I have scaled it to the point 3 but let's go and look at that to the entire scale and as I put it on the entire scale it becomes like an all red what does it mean that at the end of 15 seconds everything has been frozen so means that everything that you see is below the no flow temperature so you can review your material details to know what is the no flow temperature you will able to find it into recommended processings and this is where we are referring to the as or sorry not in recommended process but into the rheological properties you should able to see a transition temperature or in no flow temperature so what do you see over here that everything uh, at the end of 15 seconds it has been frozen or it's below the no flow temperature but obvious but we have to check whether it has been uh, what's the scenario at the end of 14.05 and as a guideline the frozen layer of fraction end of the fill or you can refer it to the you know exactly uh, frozen layer of fraction that shows throughout the temperature uh, throughout the cycle time but frozen layer of fraction end of the fill it just shows at the end of uh, fill time that is for 1.405 and now let me clear up little space for to view the results so I'm going to off the beams on the circuit beams on the circuit and as well as the you know the fit system as well so that get closer to the part now you can see that I, I, some of the portion is already been frozen means that shows that there would be no more packing even if you try to pack it uh, it, it won't pack it so the best idea is that the or the best results to view is that nothing should be over like 25 to 30 percent frozen so if i try to scale it say to check what's been frozen above like 0.25 to 1 and make it transparent so only like this much portion is available rest of all the portion has been about 25 to 30 percent so there won't be much of the packing needed or the part is already been frozen or the part is already so thin that just end of the fill it's getting freezed off so this is how i would interpret the frozen layer of fraction or frozen layer at the end of the fill now you can review the other results like weld line the best way to view the result weld line is of course the weld line uh, angle the other is that i would review it at the weld line uh, sorry or uh, highlights 
and I could put it as the temperature at which the build line is forming. So let's go and put as the flow front temperature of pressure in the fill temperature at flow front hit ok apply it and you should see that to make the weld line stronger the the weld line should not fall below the 5 degree from the melt temperature so that's that's a guideline uh, again uh, on plastic there is no hard and fast rule is all thumb thumb rules and guidelines uh, so in this case if I try to review it's like 209 and my melt temperature in this case is of uh, 240 so it's already been fallen off too much uh, so I would see that there should not be any weld line that is below uh, uh, below 235 but in this case all of them are just uh, below 35 so there is possibility this weld line would be uh, weak as well as visible as the other results that I would look into the are onto the cooling and as you can see that I already modeled the cooling channels and nodes on the circuit will show me the inlets and outlets so many times the question is been asked uh, should we model the mold boundaries around it um, it's not necessary when you are doing a uh, normal cooling analysis because it's a static analysis of course when you are trying to do a, a cool FEM uh, that's called a transient analysis then you are, are need to model the boundary conditions or bonding box of the mold you can review my other uh, videos related to the transient cooling which clearly shows the step-by-step -step procedure to model the cool FEM and how to interpret the results so it's not mandatory to model the cooling boundary or the mold boundaries when you are doing a linear static or a normal cooling analysis for the, and you can see that uh, these cooling channel which I have modeled these are quite complex cooling channel and that looks to be as an conformal type of cooling channels this may be you know uh, maybe created using a additive type of process um, to get in because it's not possible or probably they would have created the two plates and then they have uh, you know fixed the top plate and bottom plate but it's normally the people don't do it it's more likely that it would have gone for the additive type of uh, process for printing of these codes at least so what a couple of results that we should look into the cooling analysis the first and foremost results that I would look is the average part uh, uh, average part temperature but of course you can review the other results like what should be your coolant inlet and outlet temperature your whether you are getting a you know proper flow rate so Reynolds number should be in the range of uh, 7000 to 8000 to have a, like in that turbulence to be created so that you get a maximum efficiency for extracting the heat uh, so for a better visibility I'm going to off these cooling channels and then we are going to look into the the results so I'm going to off the beams on the circuits and I'm just having a uh, system but I will off the feed system as well now I am going to look at the average part temperature so it shows that the average temp part temperature at the end of that 15 seconds of cycle time um, everywhere in the part so what's the average part temperature is the temperature within the part average within the thickness okay it's average within the thickness at the end of the cycle so whatever the injection packing and cooling that is we called as a IPC what you uh, put in at the end of it you should uh, see these temperatures uh, we will not have an option of looking at what's happening at 8 second or something because this is a, a static analysis if you want to know what's happening at 7 seconds 8 seconds probably you need to run in transient cool FEM analysis 
And as you can see that I am on the core side. The temperatures are in the range of um, pretty much in the range of 40 to 35 also from the core side and let me rotate and see what's the scenario on to the cavity side it's pretty much the the same uh, it's in the like 40 range of 40 and 35 or so now everything how to interpret whether my cooling time is sufficient or not at the average part temperature it should be the maximum part temperature or whatever you see here is 63.5 it should be at least below the below the no um, the ejection temperature of the part where do you find the ejection temperature in the recommended processing you should be able to see the ejection temperature it's so in this case ejection temperature is 122 and i have everywhere in the part is like 63.5 so I have an opportunity that I can further go and reduce this time from 15 to something like 11, right? Well, before you decide that, the other results that to be looked upon is the maximum part temperature or the maximum part on this. So what does it shows typically the, the hot spots and the cold spots in the part. Now you can see that there is a bit of hot spots created in my part. Okay. This is an hot spot that has been created. Probably you want to look at the thickness, whether the thickness is assigned properly over here. But this is so your maximum part temperature should also be below 122. Yes, in this case, it's 122. I am referring to the 122 is the ejection uh, temperature recommended by the resin manufacturer. And the cold spots, probably you can look at that, the areas which are freezing very fast. I can do the scaling of it and see that, hey, show me the areas that are scaling way below the 40 uh, or can we let you know that these are my cold spots actually. You can see that this is already been frozen. We look at the frozen layer of fraction and we could see that this is already been frozen. So possibly this is going to create a hot, uh, cold spot over here. Okay, uh, that's how you interpret these two results. Now the last and foremost results that to look at is the deflection temperature, uh, uh, deflection all effect. Now, if you're looking at the two cavity, like in this case, I'm looking at the two cavity and these results could be a misleading. Uh, uh, the reason I'm saying misleading is I have to view this result with the anchor. So it is best way to view the results with an anchor plane. And if you are having a two cavity, I would suggest that you off the other cavity so that all of your, you know, focus is on the one cavity. Well, same results can be, you know, replicated or duplicated to the other cavity. So it's best that you concentrate on to the single cavity. And I highly recommend you putting in anchor plane now where do you put the anchor plane anchor plane should be put at any any area or the flat surface in your part how you are going to place it on a flat surface and look at the warpage again warpage is a relative you know presentation with with respect to some surface we are looking at how that surface is getting deflected this is the best way to you know uh, i would say define the warpage in this so in this case, I put an anchor plane at the bottom surface over here because this is a resting and I need to be at flat so that the, this container doesn't get toppled. I put it in the visualization. You can go and put the anchor plane. Look at this and you can see that I, I have already seen the like, you know, a bowing happening over here on these two surfaces. Now you can find the cause of warpage what what is causing that warpage so you can go and further split the screen i'm going to uh, split the screen into the four and i have a total warpage now creating create uh, value over here and then i would look like how much is the cooling contributing to it I would also look at how much is the differential shrinkage uh, contributing to it and I am going to look at how much is the you know, 
corner effect because this is a box shape type of part so i would definitely recommend using a corner effect and you'll able to find the corner effect option uh, at the war page page now the corner effect option is only available for mid plane and dual domain if you're running with the 3d analysis you will not get this option of it corner effect is already been taken care in 3d automatically so in this case i could able to see that major contribution comes from the differential shrinkage and the cooling has little or no effect on it same as a bit of the corner effect is also contributing to it if i need to address this probably i need to address with the variable wall thickness if i need to reduce or with the processing setting or the packing um, this is how i would interpret the warpage results um, uh, another minute to look at it is that i can further go and put the uh, layers or use the layers to find that how much is the warpage happening typically into the flat area so what i did is that i put in those into the layers those elements in layers and the only outer layer which is of importance for me i have put it over here and then i can look at the warp page and that too in the z direction particularly so in the z direction if i am reviewing it i would able to see that how much is getting contributed over here uh, so this is how i think uh, we can view and interpret the results for the warp page analysis i hope these top 12 results would be helpful and be a part of your regular uh, mold flow report and you give a better you know understanding about the results and how to use it to your customer i appreciate your time and thank you for watching and talk to you again soon have a great day ahead